Welcome, welcome, welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. I'm your host, Gordon Nathaniel, for another exciting episode of the Toxic Reality Show. Again, I'm your host, Gordon Nathaniel. Tonight, really didn't want to go into this whole, everyone's covering the Puff Daddy debacle. But, as I reflected and watched a lot of the coverage, I noticed something was missing. And this is about the diabolical Diddy Doodoo's dudes. And a common trait that exists amongst many, and I want to say not even many, but most of these gentlemen. Um, I'm not here to deliberate people's sexual preference, whether the issue of dudes being gay or not is, is, is important. But there's something that is an underlying factor. On this show, we're going to analyze, look at, see some of the data that's there, watch some of the footage, and then try to understand how did we get here, Right? How did we get here? Understand that the type of people involved in this mess, in this Diddy's doo-doo dudes, these are all 1% guys. These aren't guys who are just barely making $100,000 a year. These are millionaires, billionaires, right? These are the, these are the guys that the women wait after the concert 50 of the most gorgeous women that are in the facility are waiting in the hotel lobby for these guys these are the these are the for these women they're the 0.01 percent the men that have the means the ability the fancy cars the, the i mean millions in cash they're driving Three, four hundred thousand dollar vehicles. Things that for your average man he would dream of. And these guys are boasting all of this rich, obtained wealth. These are the guys that the women are talking about. When you're talking about millionaires, they throw away six feet, they throw away a six pack. A lot of the stuff they throw away because the more money you make, the criteria goes down. Right? So we're talking about elite echelon men. Whether they're, you know, they look rough and scruffy, these guys have millions of dollars in assets and, and boast and show their jewelry, their Rolex watches that are ice, iced out. They brag about it on their music. And then come to find out, these very men that these women all say that they want, come to find out that these men also enjoy being with other men. But that's not what this is about. And I need you to be very keen on what we're talking about. What is a free win? Morgan said, injury holding is when you're connected to an individual who reliably sells you out in one way or another. However, you're feeling dependent to the abuser and freeze at the unimportant thought of clearing out. Good point. The point that we're going to make tonight is we're going to get, we're going to watch a couple videos to warm it up. And one of them is, I'm warning you now, very graphic. But I want to lay a baseline because this issue is not just about Puffy, Diddy, Doodoo, -doo and his dudes. This is something that's prevalent in Hollywood, in the music industry. And one wouldn't be a far stretch to say this is also in sports. Just hasn't come out as much. But what we're being bombarded with now in the news, we have Jeffrey Epstein and all that went on there. But because now we have Diddy involved in these allegations that are made against him, 
we're seeing all of these young and mid-aged black men being outed. Videos are showing up. Audios are showing up. And apparently the allegation is that in Diddy Doodoo's home, they had cameras in every room that many in every room that and a lot of people didn't know about. So I don't want to make this too long and 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 uh and, and prophesize too much. Nick Nice G J A. Greetings, Kings. Greetings to you, sir. We're gonna jump right into the first video on Diddy Doodoo. And this actually is not a Diddy Doodoo issue, but this is a group called B2K. And the young man has something to say because it seems that he was outed and he's not excited about it. And here we go. We was in a room together. Chris Stokes put us in a room together and made us do stuff together. You feel me? Me and he said made us do things together. Hold that thought. Who? I'll get to it. Jarrell, Houston. You're not going to sweep anything under the rug. I was molested by Chris Stokes and Mark Houston, and that's just, that's just the truth. Period. My truth is the fact that Chris Stokes had me and Jarrell Houston in a room sucking each other's dick. My truth is that, hold on, hold on, Judy, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. My, I got a problem with Fizz, because Fizz is the first person to take it in this fucking asshole, and he want to make it seem like I'm a motherfucking homo, like I'm crazy, and like there's a problem, like I did something to him. I never did anything to nobody. Some random, some tapes got out, and we all know what that was about. Obviously, it was in God's will. I can't protect Boog when he gonna set me up and he knew about the meeting at Mike Conception's house and my and, and in Compton. You know, I'm trying to protect Chris, Marcus, Omari, y'all, everybody have respect for everybody's family, but don't nobody show no love or respect to me. He's never really said So yeah. Um this is a an infamous video with Mick Meek Mill Meek Mills. Right. Here we go. Man, you doing it, man. You deserve it, daddy. You putting in that work. Proud of you. I love you. Daddy. Okay. Here we go. Wait, you know what? Okay. This audio recording is very graphic. I mean, and this is, a, you know, I don't want to make this specifically, Nick Nice Jay's got a good point. Don't want to make this a black issue because this goes across all races. This is Hollywood. This is entertainment. This is the music industry. This is sports. This is the higher 1%. I'm sorry, I can't even say 1%. The 0.01%, the creme de la creme in terms of richness. These are the people. Here's another alleged recording of Diddy and another aforementioned uh, rapper who's in the news prevalent, uh, very prevalent. And allegedly, the gentleman who recorded this video was at a party at Puffy's home and went to the door because he heard, in his words, men struggling to handle penis having a hard time handling it and yelling. This is this man's words. It's a dude was struggling to handle D. And he put his phone by the door and recorded what you're about to hear now. Curtis, what's good? And, and lastly... Lastly, we got Stevie J. Now, he's upset with 50 Cent because 50 Cent has been threatening to release a surviving Diddy video and has made numerous accusations. And apparently somehow Stevie J is caught up in this, who is a producer for Bad Boy. And I'll let Stevie J say it for, you, for himself. Curtis, what's good, man? I want you to fade, nigga. Fuck all that. Since it's entertainment, let me beat the shit out of you on TV or something. Don't duck that. I'm calling you out. What you want to do, Curtis? Curtis! What was that? 
You know any dudes that talk like that? What is happening? Where's masculinity? Where are men? Now, I'm a... Oh, Lord. Um... Curtis, what's good? Let's go back. Let's go back. Right? We put us in a room together. Chris Stokes put us in a room together and made us do stuff together. Now this, he said, I'm going to break this one down because this one is, it, it, it tells the the mindset best. Now there's this group, B2K, four individuals in it. Marcus Houston. Um, I, I don't know. This, these two are in the group as well. He said, they made us go into a, into a room and they made us do stuff. Somebody held a gun to your head? How do, you, how do you make me do something? Did you threaten me? If you don't do X, Y, and Z, we're going we gonna to beat you up. You feel me? Me and Jarrell. Houston. Me, that must be Jarrell. You're not going to sweep anything under the rug. I was molested by Chris Stokes and Mark Houston, and that's, just, that's the truth. That's Mark Houston, Chris Stokes. He said he was molested by... Which means he's a victim. But he said, he, he said, this member of the group, that he was molested by Chris Stokes and Marcus Houston. Continue. Period. My truth is, is the fact that Chris Stokes had me and Jarrell Houston in a room sucking each other's dick. He said Chris Stokes had him and another man sucking each other's penis. Had made you please define that, sir. Because you know, man, making me <laughs> go into a room and say, Hey, man, you gotta do what? Continue. My truth is that hold on, hold on, Judy, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. My I got a problem with Fizz because Fizz is the first person to take it in this fucking asshole. Now, now, here he goes. And I want you to take all of this into context because what type of gender speaks like this? You're a victim. I was in a room and I had to do it. I mean, dude whipped out his penis and so I had to do it. I was forced to do it. He made me do it. And you want to make it seem like I'm a motherfucking... Then he's like, the other guy was the first one to take it in his anus, so that makes it okay? And he's like, then he's trying to defend his, his fragile masculinity by saying, you know, but you want to call me, uh, you know, uh, uh, homosexual. Here. Oh, my God, I'm crazy, and like, there's a problem, like, I did something to him. I never did anything to nobody. Some random, some tapes got out, and we all know what that was about. Obviously, it was in God's will. I can't protect Bug when he gonna set me up and he knew about the meeting at Mike Conception's house and my and and in Compton. You know, I'm trying to protect Chris, Marcus, Omari, y'all, everybody have respect for everybody's family, but don't nobody show no love and respect to me. So Omarion, Chris Houston, all of these dudes are involved in this stuff. And I guess if I'm understanding him correctly, they threw him under the bus saying that he was the one, you know, who's gay. And I'm like, you call him gay because you put your penis in him? And he's now saying that we were fo forced or put into a room to, and made to do stuff? How do you, sir, how do you, how do you make someone do something? I, I just can't understand that. The, the man in me is like, what are you talking about? But that's not what this is about. We're going to get to it. Let me let him finish. So, we, we've heard enough, right? This man gonna refer to it, man. You deserve it, daddy. Daddy. I, yo. Okay. Let's get to the point. All right. What everyone's missing about the Puff Diddy doo doo dudes is this one common trait these men were raised by single mothers only and let's get to it right 
Let's get into it. These men were raised by single mothers. And only women have that kind of mindset where to, to achieve and get something in business is I got to sleep with somebody to do it. Because, you know, my father was active in my life. And there were certain things as a man that you just ain't going to do. Some things were left unsaid because you knew better as a man that we don't do this. Don't get me wrong. I was raised by a single mother. But I had enough awareness. I had enough of a involvement of my father to know that that nah go go so man. And even my culture. When I do them thing, the man. Who was the leadership and the masculinity in these young men's life? Because to me, but Jerry said puff bati. <laughs> I like it. That's better than my Diddy Doodoo, boy. You win. You win. You win, Jerry Sage. You win. But, yo, you've got to ask yourself. This ain't, look, people are getting lost in the whole, all of these dudes getting called out. All I'm seeing is a whole bunch of voluntary sex between dudes. I ain't seen nobody said I was held down against my will. You got one dude said Cuba Gooding Jr. He was putting his hands on me and blah. He, this dude is suing Diddy as well. Cuba's putting his hands on me and blah, blah, blah. And then another night, a dude was rubbing his finger on my anus. Bruh. And you just saying he, he just wanted to rub his finger on your anus and then he stopped? Come on, bruh. We know what went down that night. They still trying to hold on to the fragile strands of masculinity that exist in them. But we know the truth. We ain't stupid. Y'all sound voluntary with all of this stuff. Y'all sound like women. Something women would do. Oh, I went out with him and he bought me, he bought me, you know, some red bottom shoes. So I, so I, so I fucked him. That's chicks too. Women do that. Oh, he bought me this. He paid my bill. So, you know, he took me out and bought me a Birkin bag. So I broke him off of some. You didn't hold no gun to that woman's hand. You bought them something. There was a there was a currency exchange. Nick Knight said on the flip side, there was a time in my life when I related to my wife as mama. She told me to never call her that because words are powerful. That's true. Picture me calling another man daddy. Now women do that. You got her, you know, you blowing her back out, handful of hair. You riding it to the sunset. Giddy up. Crack the whip on the ass. Yeah. She calling you daddy. And a couple other names. Praying to Jesus. Everything else. <laughs> but you ain't never gonna have me see the words daddy come out of my mouth. To describe another man, you doing it, daddy? The fuck? Excuse my language. The issue that we are not dealing with that everyone's missing and is a problem in the community is the absence of fathers. Justin Bieber was also raised by a single mother. Usher was also raised by a single mother. There are anomalies. Puffy was raised by a mother and father. And from what I understand, still married to this day. But the exception is not the rule. What we are saying is that the common trait amongst all of these men involved in this is what happens when fathers are not present in the life of young men. And when you have that, you open the door to all of the devil's work. And all of that stuff is abound because what you notice, as many people are giggling and laughing, and you watching the toughest of the tough. I work the street corner, I sell that coat, I flip this, I'll shoot you. -da 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 -da. All of that stuff that they sing in their songs. And this dude. You putting in that work. This dude's putting in that work. And. Fuck the shit, nigga. Fuck the ass, nigga. 
Curtis, what's these dudes? These dudes. Where's a daddy? Where's the daddy? You want to tell me that fathers aren't important in a child's life towards shaping a young man? Women can't raise boys because they do bitch shit. These are feminine traits, Nick Nice. Absolutely. These are things women do. And when you grow up, and you follow in the example of the only adult in the house, which is your single mama, you're willing to do stuff sexually to get stuff, reprehensible stuff, stuff that men don't do. Men don't do that. Men raised, and not to say all of them, but most men raised in an environment with a father are not going to be like, man, if I just, you know, just take the head, I'm going to get a record deal. Your daddy going to be like, you're going to reflect on the things that your daddy said. And he's going to say, you do not bend the way you observe, live your life for anything. You stand tall as a man. That's what you do. Women go ahead and sell themselves. That's not masculine. And that's the thing that everyone is missing in this. Like Jerry said, Puff Batty. This is real stuff, man. And this, if anything, should, should re-emphasize the importance of having fathers active in a child's life. Well, we are... What's unfolding before us is the degradation of society, not black society, society in general, Western world, the criminal justice system, the courts are all involved in removing masculinity from children and putting the women in the position of being leaders in the household. And that experiment is failing. Look what we have unfolding for us. How embarrassing. You got young women thinking that they want these higher echelon men. And what are they getting instead? What, what, what are they getting instead? You're getting all these effeminate males who, who on their music are talking all strong and how they're going to do this, that, and the other. I'm going to murk this guy and I'm going to, and I be flipping this and I sell that. And I'm from the toughest of the tough, tough. And what are they really? That's what they are. That's your future husband, ladies. You want all of them six-figure dudes and the, the with the with the Bentley cars and this, that, and the other. You need to get you a solid dude. I'm not saying that any man that makes six figures ain't solid, but you really need to go back to. They talked about that rat experiment. Yeah, that's right. I did a show about that. What happens when you have the, the rat and you create a utopia? The men become feminized. And they start raping each other. It's in the rat experiment. Watch the video on the utopia. And how it parallels urban society today. Males started killing each other and then raping each other. Stop being interested in women. These are all, the study was repeated 20 times and the same result each time. Anyway, this is vile. This is disgusting. And um, what I want you to focus on as you entertain and watch what's going on with this whole, as this whole thing unfolds. Remember what is absent? Fathers. What is present and their stamp is all over it? Single mothers. We need help, people. Tune in next time, please. Like and subscribe.
Need your help for us to get to the finish line. We're, beginning, we're on the verge of being monetized. Please share the video. Please tell a couple of your friends. Let me tell you what, what this, why we're doing this. And I'll quickly sum up. Why do we do this? To inform you. To give you something of value. Not just, we're going to hear and talk bad about women. We're going to talk about men. It's bigger than that. I'm trying to help you. So that you don't make the same mistakes I and thousands, millions of other men have made. That's how you benefit. I aim to give you value. Right? And then finally, what did you learn? What did you learn for today? We learned what happens when there's the absence of fathers. What could happen? And what's happening and playing out before us right now? People are making fun and laughing. These, these men, you know, one of them came out and said that his 12-year-old son sees this and thinks his dad is gay. That's not the issue. The issue is, and I'm sure he's active in his son's life. But his dad wasn't acting as his. I believe his father died when he was a young age. So he didn't have his dad. This is why this is important. This is why single, for, the, for my fit, fine, feminine women who are watching this, my traditional women who are watching this, this is why you got to be careful. When many of the men have been raised by single mothers, you also have to validate and find out where this man's head is because he can't be feminine and quasi. He got to be all men and has resolved the issues of being raised by a single woman that he has studied, whether it be therapy or whatever religious book, but he has studied and invested in himself. Remember, even Usher, when asked, would you send your son to live with Diddy, with Diddy, Diddy Doodoo, he said no. Tune in next time. Toxic Reality Show. Gordon Nathaniel. We out.